So to start with, uh, what is Tipos Latinos? Uh, Tipos Latinos is a biennial exhibit that celebrates Latin America's best type design work since 2004. But not only that, it's a very fruitful uh, e exchange in between the countries uh, of the continent uh, through its exhibitions, uh, its visits, uh, its workshops, and, and so on. It, it is an event that uh, activates the type community every time it happens. So how does Tipo Latinos work? Uh, first, we, they set out the rules and they do a call for entries. And usually that call for entries stays three to four weeks online. Uh, designers and type designers are invited to submit their work for free. Uh, one of the members of the, the countries, they volunteer to be the host country for the in-person jury while managing all the entries from the call. Uh, for entries. And then another country volunteers to handle the visual identity of the conference. Each country appoints a jury member and needs to find the resources to fly the jury member to the host country. The jury meets over three to four days, kind of like a weekend, and they have to select 70 to 80 works out of like 200 or 300 submissions that we have every two years. A few weeks later, once the results are published, it is up for each country to print out the selection and develop uh, exhibitions as many as possible within the course of two years in their own countries. And this is like a unique thing to me about Tipos Latinos because once you, you're part of the exhibition, you have your work shown in multiple countries, like all at some, sometimes at the same time. So how Tipos Latinos came to life, a short story. Uh, it all started with this guy, uh, Ruben Fontana, from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Maestro. He's the founder of the University of Buenos Aires uh, typography program. And he was like uh, recently a TDC medal recipient as well in 2020. Uh, very famous. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people here know him. And he's the founder as well of TPG, the Typographica magazine, which existed from 87 to 2006. And Ruben also created an exhibition called Letras Latinas in Buenos Aires. Some pictures here. It was uh, an exhibition of uh, Latin type design uh, inside of a bigger event called TPG Buenos Aires. And at the same time, uh, Brazil was like giving its first steps with uh, digital type design. Uh, digital type design was gaining force uh, in the country. And this couple, uh, Cecilia Consolo and Luciano Cardinali, they are graphic designers uh, from Sao Paulo and they were like involved with the, with the or organization of uh, ADG Brazil. They uh, were organizing uh, a conference called Typografia Brasilis as well, which was showing like uh, the beginnings of type design in Brazil. These are the images we have. They are a bit bad because back in those days, the, the cameras, the, the digital cameras quality was bad. And a shame, it's a shame. Yeah, we don't have uh, many <laughs> registers for, from these events. And so the story goes that uh, in one of these events, Typographia, uh, typ typo Typographia, Typographia Brasilis, Brasilis, sorry, I, I keep confusing the names. Uh, they invited Ruben over to Sao Paulo to give a workshop uh, on type design. And that workshop was like a landmark. I think this guy yeah. was there. It, it was a milestone, influenced a lot of people to pursue type design or to teach typography and etc. Yeah, not only in Hiki, like a lot of people uh, were doing their workshop, like uh, Fernanda Martins, she's there in the picture, and lots of other people who later on developed uh, some career in type as well. Uh, but then Ruben in Sao Paulo, he met with uh, Cecilia and Luciano and they had the idea of uh, coming up with the Biennale Letras Latinas in yeah. 2004, which was the very first uh, edition of the, of the Biennale. And it was formed by only four countries, Argentina, Brazil, Chile and Mexico. 
we can see there on the right uh, the judging. So it's one member from each of those countries in the in the jury. And here on the left, an image from one of the f of the first uh, editions of the of the show. It's a show that took place in Sao Paulo, the first edition of Letras Latinas. And then uh, we have we had a second uh, edition. Some other countries joined in, like Uruguay, uh, Colombia, Peru. And then uh, it came 2007, and the Typographica magazine uh, stopped being published. And uh, and Ruben Fontana he he stepped down from from the from being an organizer of the the exhibition, and then it turned into Tipos Latinos. He gained a new name and a new logotype as well, which is this uh, nice ambigram by uh, Gabriel Meave, who is a very famous Mexican uh, calligrapher and type designer as well from Mexico. And it's such a nice logo that we kept using it for all the other years, <laughs> of the other editions of the Biennale. Yeah. And also there is like, uh, after 2008, for each edition of the BNL, there was like an invited typeface to be part of the, the identity, which was also important to promote Latin American type. So what about the categories? Uh, this is like an a, a overview of the categories throughout the, the years. Uh, this is the current uh, list of the categories. It is important to highlight those differences, to, to say that uh, as the years go by, the organizers analyze what is being submitted and they adapt the categories to fit what is being produced more or less uh, throughout the year. So back then we had like a, a screen category for type on screen and that fell down. And then we had like for the longest time design with type, which is like the application of type instead of just type design. And then at one point it was also dropped and because the, the production of type design grew and then it, it, it made more sense to keep showing type design and not the usage of type. What's exciting here about the new um, list of categories is that display is always the biggest one and now we, we broke it down to script and display. There is a new category called super family because technology allows us to produce larger type families and also a new category called emerging type which hosts work from uh, type design students and also young professionals who haven't uh, published a typeface yet so that gives them a spotlight within the Tipos Latinos. This is like a comparison of like works received and selected throughout the years of the five countries who s submit most works. Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Chile, and Colombia. And it's always like a competition among them. Like who's going to submit more works and get more works selected? It's pretty like l even here these days, Argentina, Brazil, and Mexico, they got 24 works each uh, downstairs. Uh, and this is the breakdown per category on the Tipos Latinos, so display is still the most category with submissions. And it's interesting to point out that the decision to accommodate the works within the, the selection is proportional to the amount of work submitted as well. So this is like the distribution and you see that emerging talent, look at how, how many people have submitted, how many works from like uh, young type designers, which is exciting. Yeah, and this is from the latest edition, yeah? yeah. It's not like in general, this is only from from the TL9 one. Exactly, yeah. the one that is downstairs. So then Tipos Latinos and the jury. So Tipos Latinos were like ready to go in 2020. We, we invited a um, design studio from Brazil called Casa Hex, who did this amazing visual identity for the conference using Latin type and all, but then boom, COVID. <laughs> So then we had to put a stop on everything and like we decided to postpone, of course, and then we rescheduled that to 22. But not only that, we had to cancel the in-person jury because not only because of the, uh, the COVID, but also we don't want to make like uh, extra expenses for the country. So it will be cheaper, less expensive to do it online. Yeah, then, and, and now speaking more about the jury. Uh, so before COVID, Usually we had like a three to four days uh, in-person jury. So uh, it happened like uh, in each time in a different place in Latin America. 
And uh, usually the participant countries would send uh, a, ju a jury member to, to take part in the jury. And they would select 70 to 80 uh, works. But yeah, in, then in, in 2022, it, uh, we decided to do it online. And we put up the, the selected works to 100 uh, because it was like four years uh, interval and not two. And we decided to do that uh, virtual jury in two parts. Uh, first one in 12 days, which was like an individual selection. And then a second one, uh, like the collective one, uh, we would do it like in a, an online platform uh, in four days. Yeah. So yeah, this was the jury. Um, know this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we was like uh, we were like uh, four women, four men from these uh, countries. These were the countries taking part this year. And just to explain very quickly the dynamics of the the, the judging, the voting system. So every work could have like uh, zero or up to eight votes. Yeah, one per per member of the jury. And each member had 100 votes to, to give to the 514 total entries it was which were submitted. A lot of submissions this year. Yeah, it was like crazy. And then uh, the, the projects that had seven to eight votes were selected. And then zero to two votes, they were elim eliminated. And then the rest of the, the projects, the ones that had three to six votes, they uh, would go to the next uh, stage of the live sessions. They would uh, go into discussions. Yeah. So that they could fit the 100 to discuss yeah. which ones will, will complete the selection. And of course, they were like much more than, than 100. Yeah. Yeah. And going back, the ones who had uh, seven to eight votes, they were also eligible for for gaining a dis distinction of excellence. Yeah. Just like this special badge. Yeah. And this year, we decided to give three of them. The first one to Loyo, uh, this typeface by Sabrina Lopez and Maxi Spoviero from Argentina, which is a very nice uh, serif, italic, full of swashes, and uh, yeah, super nice. And then the second one was Atlante by Iomar Campos, Martin Sesto, Venezuela and Argentina. It's a phone published by Type Together recently, which is super nice as well. It's like based on map typography, if I'm not wrong. It has like very lively italics, super nice as well. And the last uh, excellence was for GMX from Enigma, uh, Mexican guys. It's a very nice project as well. It's a serif, very contemporary serif font for the govern government of Mexico, and it supports like uh, 68 uh, indigenous languages, I think, uh, through like uh, special forms for Latin transliteration, yeah. So yeah, so the exhibition is downstairs. We invite you all to take a look at it. It's This is the first time in over a decade that we have like Tipos Latinos outside of Latin America. And that is thanks to ATIPI for sponsoring and hosting the, the exhibition downstairs. A uh, quick shout out to the uh, organizers on I different countries, the jury members, people who offered typefaces for this edition, people who helped translating the content to English and to Portuguese as well. It's like we're here for questions and we also have some free buttons. So thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Are we good with questions? Do we have time for any questions? We have uh, two minutes for questions. Okay. Anyone? All right. That's good. Anybody has a question? I'm not from Latin America. Can I also compete? No. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> and like, and we can we can we ask to do a selfie with you guys? Come here. Let's see if we can say hi, everyone. Yay! Anyone? No questions? Last chance. All right, people, talk to us downstairs. We got free buttons, and then we enjoy the, the show. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.